So what does double blind testing do? We think it minimizes human influence. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with a recent study conducted by Dr. Lisa Litt at UC Davis, she tested 18 dogs and handlers and a simplification of her test was she set up several different scenarios and these were explosives dogs and narcotics detection dogs. She set up several different scenarios and in one of the scenarios she placed a red piece of construction paper and she told all these handlers there is a hide behind this red piece of construction paper when in actuality there were no hides. Uniformly these 18 teams alerted at that piece of construction paper. Now there's of course things we can discuss about the number of t teams that she tested is not enough to represent a statistical average and I'll, I'll grant that. But 18 teams perform in false alerts simply because a piece of red paper is hanging on a cabinet indicates a little bit of an issue. Obviously there's some human influence. A piece of construction paper would be meaningless to a dog. So the human handler had to have applied some type of pressure, some type of influence on the dog in order to get them to alert at the place that was flagged. Now they also did, she also had searches set up wherein hides were placed and the dogs for the most part were successful. Pretty good find rate. But that's the way most certification tests are structured now. You walk into a search scenario, your instructions are, there are three hides, you must find all three. We believe you should remove that. You don't need to know how many hides, you also don't need to know if hides are even present. If you can't use your dog to <coughs> reliably search an area such as this room, and make the statement, nothing is there. Then there's some kind of issues that you need to address. Your dog needs to be able to find it if it's there. Also, rule out its presence if it's not there.